First Liberty is currently representing 35 U.S. Navy SEALs. They've asked for a religious accommodation to the Biden administration's vaccine mandate. In return, they've been threatened with everything from being kicked out of the SEALs to having to repay the very high cost of their highly specialized training. There's someone I want you to meet here in Washington, D.C., who has a unique perspective into what it's like to be an active part of what the military calls special warfare. And we are here at the headquarters of Family Research Council in Washington, D.C. Uh, Tony Perkins let us borrow his set for a few minutes so that we could have this conversation. Let me tell you a little bit about Jerry Boykin. He served 36 years in the U.S. Army, achieved the rank of lieutenant general. He, ulti uh, he was one of the original members of the Army's Delta Force. Uh, he uh, ultimately commanded those warriors in combat operations. Uh, later, he commanded all the Army Green Berets, as well as the Special Warfare Center and School. He's an ordained minister, and uh, you now serve as executive vice president here at Family Research Council. There is a lot more to your resume, but that gives people an idea why we wanted to talk to you. Hi, Jerry. How are you? It's good to have uh, you here in Washington with us. And uh, thank you for letting me be on your program. Yeah, it's an honor to get to chat with you, and I appreciate your making some time for us. Give us an idea how challenging it is to become a member of an elite group such as Delta Force or the Navy SEALs. How, how challenging is that? Well, it's very challenging. And, uh, you know, whether it's Army, Navy, Air Force, or Marine Corps, they're all uh, brought in through an assessment and selection program. And, uh, the, and they choose the very best. But uh, it's not all about physical strength. Uh, there's also an emotional and intellectual aspect uh, that is uh, assessed through this process. So we have, believe it or not, we have some of the smartest people in the military as well as some of the most physically fit and just toughest people in, in all of the special operations entities within the branches of service. So it's physical strength, it's smarts, but there's one more aspect that I think you want to talk about, and that is there's a lot of heart that goes into it. What is it in your heart that made you want to be, made you want to try to be in that, to, to make the effort to go through all the training and everything else to do that? What's in your heart that made that an important thing to you? Well, when I came into the Delta Force, of course, there was no Delta Force. There was this was a new thing, and this was uh, and when they called me and asked me to come and try out for it, they challenged me. They said this could be the toughest thing you've ever been through, and that was a challenge. And they said uh, you got to be in top physical condition, and uh, this is going to be 30 days, and and it's going to be the toughest thing you've ever been through. And as far as I was concerned, that was a challenge that could not go un answered yeah. so i wanted to, to i wanted to test myself against their standards right. let's talk about what it's like to to be in the military and just joining the military you give up a lot of personal freedom when you enter a program like that there are a lot more constraints that are put on your life but one thing that people do not give up are their constitutional rights Oh, that's exactly right you uh you know there is a limitation on your first amendment rights you can't you can't call the commander in chief, the president of the United States, uh, a uh, a bad name or something like that. You can't speak out against your chain of command. You can speak against them, but it has to be done within the confines of the chain of command. Uh, so that's the only limitation. You you still have your constitutional rights to include the First Amendment. It's just that there are limitations in the First Amendment. But uh, you 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 absolutely are defending those constitutional rights. Remember, the oath that they take, I do solemnly swear they'll support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Your oath is to defend the Constitution and all of its amendments. And, uh, and these, uh, these, these people, young men and women, that serve in our military, uh, they understand that their oath is to the Constitution, that they should never dishonor that Constitution, and it is a rare thing when uh, when one does. This this all comes down to one key question. Uh, I want to talk about the seals that we're representing. Thirty five of these elite warriors. Did they have the right to request and receive a religious accommodation to the vaccine mandate that's put out by the administration? Every person wearing a uniform has that right to request 
and to be granted a religious exemption. And uh, no matter what uh, the leadership of our military is saying today, I am not a lawyer, but I can tell you that after 36 years of defending the Constitution, they have a right to decline that vaccination. Yeah. Explain why that is. What is it that gives them that right to, to get that when so many of their other freedoms have been taken away? Yeah, they, well, their other freedoms haven't been taken away. They're, they're, there's an infringement right now on their First Amendment or their religious freedoms. Yeah. Uh, there's an infringement on that. But that said, this is a controversial uh, issue. The, the, this is a controversial vaccination, that there is as much bad information out about it as good information. It's hard to figure out what's true. That's right. And then you combine that with all the lies that have been told about COVID. Uh, then you have to wonder, is my government lying to me about this vaccination? Or does my government actually know what the truth is? And I think that these and, and, and all the people that are declining this, whether they're in the military or not, are uh, that question has not been answered to their satisfaction. If it was a smallpox vaccination, they would get it. It was tested. No. It, it, it had a long history behind it and had proven itself. But uh, they have the right to decline this vaccination because they are the very people that are supporting and defending the Constitution, which gives every American the right to decline this vaccination. What happens if the administration does not back down and they say, nope, you've either got to take this vaccine or we're going to kick you out of the seals, we're going to punish you in some other way, e even potentially, theoretically, up to court martial. What happens if they, if they push through with that? First of all, you are first liberty. That is the finest pro bono law firm in this country. You have done almost miraculous work in defending the rights of our young men and women in the military, and I am proud to be associated with you. It's not going to happen. You. You're going to get this to the Supreme Court, you, and the Supreme Court is going to rule in your favor, and I think you're already almost there. You're, you're pretty doggone close to it from what I understand from talking to your your president. And uh, But what if it does, well, well, just hypothetically, what if it did happen? Yeah. Then these, these, these men, uh, in this case, men are going to have to make a very tough decision. And uh, but I can tell you something. I, I know these kind of people. I've been with them. I spent a lot of years with them. They're not going to be bullied. They're not going to be bullied into it. There's already been a lot of bullying. I can give you chapter and verse of people that have called me or contacted me uh, about what happened to them. And they have literally been bullied into taking this vaccination because when you say you've got one hour to make up your mind whether you're going to take that vaccination, and if you say yes, we're going to give you the vaccination. Yeah. If you say no, we're going to start out processing you and put you out of the military. That's so hard. I mean, it's just, it's just I can't imagine being in that position. That is, as far as I'm concerned, the epitome of bad leadership. And that's what we've got right now. We've got bad leadership in our military. That anybody, any commander that would treat one of his own like that uh, shouldn't be commanding anything. He, he, in fact, he shouldn't even be in the military. But that's what we've got. We've got a lot of people that are bullying these men and women that are serving this country today by saying just what I just said. Yeah. One hour or we're going to process you out of the military. And can you make a decision, a life-changing decision like that? You, if you have a family, can you imagine that? If you have a family, let me tell you, you're going to save our military. You're going to save our military with this case that you have taken. You are going to save our military because stop and think about this. And if I'm if I'm on a rant here, just stop me and we'll I'll settle down. I'm hanging on every word. Go. You stop and think about this. This is not just about these 35, 36 seals today. This is about the future of our military. They are the elite. They are the elite of the Navy, and they're some of the most elite in our entire military structure. People are watching what happens to them. If you are able to bully them into to capitulating, then there's no hope for the rest. But if, in fact, 
the court upholds that they have a right to, and I believe they will, and I believe they will largely because you, you have professionals handling this case, and and they're good. And I I think if you if you look at it from a long term perspective, this is about the future of our military. Hmm. Period. It's about the future of our military, and if you lose this case then it's, uh, we're going to be devastated. Our military is going to be devastated because people are being bullied. You don't do that and expect to be able to take those same people into battle with any kind of respect for their chain of command. And what makes us better than all the other militaries in the, in, in the world today, to include China and Russia, is the fact that we've got better people. And these people are standing on their constitutional rights. People are watching them. If they win, the military wins. If they lose long term, our military loses. What mom and dad wants Johnny and Janie to be put into a military organization where their commander is going to bully them the way these people have been? Well, I, one aspect of this case is, and you've referenced this already, because they're actively serving currently, we're not putting the, our clients on camera. They, they can't speak for themselves. They, they can't speak up because of, of the constraints of being in the military. You have been there. You've, you've worn the uniform. You've served at the same level of, of special warfare that they're currently actively engaged in. If you were to speak on their behalf, to speak what's going on in their mind, what would you say? Thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I would say I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you for the decision that you've made and the way you've stood your ground. And I'm praying for you that God will be with you. Whether that means anything to you or not, I just want you to know that I am praying for you. God will be with you and see you through this. Do not give in. Don't capitulate, and I know you won't. It's not in your lexicon. The word's not in your lexicon, but it's also not in your heart to ever, to ever leave a man behind, and that's what you would be doing here because you got so many people watching you, so many people hoping and praying that you're going to be successful in this because it means so much to so many people and are all our services. So God bless you for what you've done, the decision you've made. Stand strong, uh, and, and I'll be there with you. Thank you for bringing such clarity to this issue. That's why I wanted to talk to you, because you've been there, you know what it's like, and you can speak to it like nobody else that I know. Well, thank you for letting me be with you. And I'm, I'm just honored to be with you guys because I, I do have a tremendous respect for you. Anything else you'd like to share before I let you go? Well, uh, we need to be in prayer for our military. And it, as we've talked, it's a very difficult time in our military. But uh, beyond this COVID thing and beyond this mandate, vaccination mandate, uh, there are some hot spots around the world where you never know where you whether you're going to be thrown into battle tomorrow or not. So, yeah. pray for our military and pray for uh, pray for the leadership of this military and pray that their eyes will be opened and that they will ultimately come to the point where they they have a clear understanding of their responsibilities under the Constitution of the United States. Jerry Boykin, thank you for sharing with us. Thank you for your service. Thank you very much, and God bless you. And if, if this matters to you, if this resonates with you, uh, we have a special page set up on our website where you can sign our letter of encouragement to the SEALs that we're representing. There's also a place where you can write your own personal note of encouragement to them and add that to it. We'll include a link for that underneath this video, or you can just go to firstliberty.org, firstliberty.org, and find that link there. We will see you next time right here on First Liberty Live.